<laughs> Morning all. Me again, back on the trail, finally. Again, after another couple of weekends of procrastination. I think it's the drive that's putting me off, to be honest. I'm really not enjoying the commute down to this part of the world, if I'm honest. It's essentially five to six hours. Five hours in absolute perfect conditions, but generally it's not. Road works, contra flows, closed junctions, etc. Crashes each day. Anyway, no, today's fine. Today's good because I had a, I got on a bus. I just been on a bus. I mean, it was it was twenty minutes late, but you know, <laughs> that's kind of expected, really. State of public transport in this country. I don't really take public transport a lot, generally, except mostly to get to and fro to this kind of thing. So, don't get to experience it in as, as a sort of grinding every working day type commuter situation. I can imagine that'd be probably quite frustrating. Still, there we go. So, no, um, yeah, it was 20 minutes late, but I'm still here for uh, it's 20 to 12 now, 11:40 on Sunday, the 3rd of March. See, I couldn't even meet that February deadline. I over, over, overran on that as well. And yeah, but I got the bus and that means I can, I'm box fresh. Well, legs wise anyway. Um, I haven't used up half of my endurance getting to the start of the day stage. So that's good. Which means I can do much more today. Today is going to be about 14 miles, I think, from, from here. 13 perhaps, if you include the bit I just walked from the road to get here with. Um, and I, I'm going to finish in Malden, which is where I thought I would be finishing uh sort of the end of september last year 2023 so <laughs> so yeah a little bit late but if i can do this today that will be it that is the last day stage that i would be feasibly able to day trip on a sunday obviously i'll be doing backpack weeks like like i used to do back in the old days in cornwall from here northward for the rest of the trip for the rest of england all the way up to berwick on tweed and then probably hadrian's way back down Back down the Lake District and Liverpool and, and, and Blackpool and stuff, and then a little bit of Wales, then probably off as Dyke Path, and then down to uh, down to uh, the Severn, cross back into England, do Western Supermare, rejoin back up at Minehead. Done. Easy. Yeah, bosh. Knock that out in a week or something. But yes, n uh, pretty much no part of the rest of it from here northward is reasonable for me to be able to get to and from on a day on a Sunday and still get any meaningful hiking done. I mean, to be honest. This, this whole section around Dengue and, and these, these rivers has all been a bit marginal. I didn't really plan to be doing these as day trips, but so this is already pushing my self-imposed upper limit for this kind of nonsense. But that's okay. Anyway, last time, last one, big push. So yeah, I was fortunate in that there is a bus from Malden to uh, a village called Steeple over there somewhere, about a mile that way. Although yes, a little bit late, but that's fine. Uh, 20 minutes isn't a, isn't a grand, isn't a loss in the grand scheme of my, my days out, so I'm still good for the thing. Also helped by the fact it's March now and uh, sun sets at quarter to six now, I believe. Uh, and it rose earlier as well this morning. I got up at six and it was already starting to get full, full light at that point. And I mean, two, two or three weeks ago when I did the previous one of these, it was still dark when I got up at six. So, so the days are noticeably getting longer by like hours and hours now. <laughs> which means more and more hours for me to be able to get more hiking done. So that's good. So yeah, I think 14 miles. I think I'll probably be able to do that in about five hours, maybe four and a half, something like that anyway. So I should be there with about an hour before sunset. Um, yeah, not a lot to see along the way. There's a few small villages, one called May Sea Land, I think, and then just zigzag ins and outs until we actually end up in Malden itself. Uh, Northney Island, we could be able to see. Osea Island, I think, might be that one. Or is that just the far side? of the black water. I lose track of what's where really. Um, but yes, we've got all these fens here to try and circumnavigate round. So we're going to make a start. Just going to push on and uh, yeah, no time for stopping and dawdling in pubs with coffee or anything today. Although I did burn like half an hour of waiting for a bus earlier this morning. Of course, I arrived like two hours early for the bus because I wanted to make sure there's plenty of time for M25 shenanigans and there was none. So, And then the bus was 20 minutes late anyway. Uh, I'd been sat in a coffee shop with croissants and things already this morning. So I don't really need to stop much today, I shouldn't think. So let's, let's just crack on with it. Go, go, go. Ah, so here we are on the... Uh, well, just the other side of that reed bed, to be honest. But we're back on the river proper now. So that is O.C. Island over there. And big fancy houses on the middle of it. See the owner or, or some uh, very high paying tenants, whatever. I didn't know anything about O.C. Island really before I came here and looked at maps and stuff. But I was talking to someone, I can't forget who knows. It was talking about some, some sky drama that had Jude Law in it. 
apparently about a, a sort of kind of a Wicker Man-esque type murder adventure mystery serial thing that was set on that island. I still don't know anything else about it. <laughs> they should have sent an expert. So that's that sailing club we went around previously. Just, just crossed the bay really. It's got seaweed here, so it's obviously still saline, this, this river. I imagine it is right the way up to, right to Malden, to be honest. Rivers, the salinity of river, sea rivers, river mouths and stuff goes quite far inland generally. A lot of mud, quite shallow, well, looks a bit. It's obviously a deep channel in the middle. I don't know what big boats and stuff. I don't think Malden has any kind of large scale container depots or anything. So probably don't get many big boats this far up this one. But a lot of pleasure yachts. So I suspect we'll see more marinas as we go. That's going to be, oh, here we go. Yeah. Get my flappy bit of paper out, do a map bit. Perhaps the last map bit for a while. So let's have a look. There it is. So we are at that number four in the minute by steeple there, uh, more or less. Uh, and we're going to do five and six today and end up at Promenade Park Malden, which is where I parked the car in the uh, long stay car park there. Although I really want to continue a bit further up beyond there and get to the bridge over the, the Chelmo Bridge, I think it is. Um, just, just to totally cross off this side of the river. But yes, you can see OC Island there and Northney Island. Um, yeah, I don't know a lot about Northney Island either. There was an abbey there that got sacked by Vikings or something. I don't know. Um, but anyway, and then there's all that stuff up the top. I'll have to get sections, section 36 map printed for next time. Next time being May, probably. Um, yeah, so we have to deal with this zigzag nonsense here, um, which is becoming quite par for the course, this kind of thing, really. It looks like it puts an extra ooh, another eight, another six or seven miles on my day. <laughs> and I could just jump across from one headland to the other with my super bouncy winged sandals or something. But yes, but yeah, we can see all the stuff. There's Burnham back there, all that uh, wilderness out on the dengue marshes. Bradwell on sea, power station up there. And then, yeah, we are doing this bit today. And there's Malden, again, a town I knew pretty much nothing about until I looked at this map in some serious detail. I picked it quite arbitrarily, to be honest, as the uh, the nearest large town to my extreme maximum day trip extent. That's why I decided to stick a pin in this uh, this particular season of uh, adventurings and call it a day. And we'll pick up with the more conventional backpack tents type stuff later in the year over the other side. Uh, I, yeah, I started in Malden, coffee shop and stuff. Uh, a fact about Malden, it won most improved in Britain in Bloom in 2015. So. Uh, I think it's backslid now, but to be fair, it is winter, so you know, not a lot blooming anyway at the moment. So who knows <laughs> if they can reach those dizzy heights again. Ah, but yeah, it's, it's a quite calm day weather-wise. Not expecting any rain. I think it's going to be this kind of high overcast all day. There's the sun putting in a lacklustre appearance. And but yeah, very low winds. I can barely feel it. It's enough to keep it brisk. The temperature is relatively low still, though. We've got a bit of a mini cold snap over the last couple of days. So it's about. I don't know, it's going to cap at six or seven degrees centigrade today, I think, imagine. So I've got my, all my underlayers on as well today, just to keep keep moderately stable, core temperatures and stuff. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be dry today, but it had rained quite heavily yesterday, I think, in this part of the world. So there's a lot of squidge. I'm seeing a, a lot of uh, pooling in, in fields. That's actually a lake, that's not, that's not, that's not flood. But uh, yeah, so it's going to be quite muddy, but I've got the old uh, gaiters on as well today. Uh, I, it's all the gear, no idea it really is. So, let's, uh, yeah, let's keep moving. I'll see if I can find something interesting to point you at shortly. Oh, that's new. I mean, I've seen four inaccessible foil balloons this morning already, but first umbrella. Probably ought to take that and put it in a bin somewhere. I think I will. All right. Okay, still not made much significant progress. Now I have to find a bin. Yeah, working our way back down one of these side channels. I don't even know if this one has a name. Probably. <laughs> Still got the umbrella. There were two bins up at the, uh, the holiday park over there, but they were utterly overflowing. So, which is surprising because it's you know only just stopped not being just not being February. So, <sighs> must be quite a few people in that park. I did see kids using the play area thing and a couple of faces at windows of caravans. I guess some people like going off peak. <laughs> Must be cheaper. Actually, I think some people probably just lease, you know, rent them long term. So they like come down all year round for different breaks. I 
criticise the, the idea of always having to go to exactly the same place every holiday, but, you know, <laughs> here I am, uh, and there I will be in May. Um, yeah, so perhaps not being hypocritical would be good. Let's do some, let's do some bird watching. Okay, a lot of cheeping over there. Because the birds love the low tide mud flats, because all the uh, like worms and insects and things stick their heads up, get, get uh, plucked out and eaten. Two at the back there, scooping for something. Something of interest in there. Yeah, they're all, all pecking away at the mud. I guess there's like lugworms or ragworms or something in there. Good habitat. So if those same birds then go for fish at high tide, or as the different sorts of birds do that, a niche for everything probably. Let me see worm castles or just bird footprints. Yeah, I think a lot of those little bumps, those little notches, are actually those lot of they look like poo, but they're actually just excavated mud that the uh, insect worm underneath has pushed out of the way as it's digging. You see it on many sandy beaches as well, a low, a low tide. Different sorts of worms in the muddy rivers. Who knows? Well, ornithologists and naturalists know. <laughs> I, on the other hand. Have to get down there to the end of this thing and then zigzag back up the other side in some fashion although the other side does look quite fenny so maybe it's that line of trees over there so it comes back we'll see just keep walking and i'll find out come on umbrella it's time to move on just give it a name like wilson or something ah, so here we are Made it to uh, Pigeon Dock Sluice number one, land of mystery, enchantment, and illusion. This is the inwardmost end of this particular creek. And now I cross this bit and go back out again, I think along that hedge and beyond. Although that does look very messy in there, so best foot forward, slow ahead, <laughs> and then scuff my way through some long grass on the other side, I imagine. Yeah, yeah I don't know about the umbrella. I got one of these, proper big old black golfing umbrella I have at home. I use that for walking to and from work, you know, when it looks like it might rain. Problem is, I don't bring them on this kind of thing because there's only a very narrow band of rain weathers in which it's heavy enough to need an umbrella but not windy enough to turn it inside out and fling it into a hedge. So I think with this kind of day trippy hikey stuff, you're much better off just having a full set of waterproofs on hand or in the bag and the suit up if it turns. But it should be all right today. But yeah, it's given me a bit of a, a bit of an insouciant swagger as I progress down the path. People coming the other way with their dogs. <laughs> I look a bit of a dandy. Yeah, I mean, I've resisted the temptation of hiking poles until until now, to be honest, because I know they're probably orthopedically very useful for uh, mountains and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know, a little bit too close to actual crutches for my liking, and I want to resist that kind of thing until I physically need them, which may not be very far off. <laughs> But it's just extra clobber and clutter you have to carry around with you as well. You don't actually need them and not actually using them, especially on this kind of flat grass stuff. Don't need walking poles for this sort of business. Now you watch, I'm going to fall arse over tick and completely mud myself through there, having said all that. <laughs> uh, good. Uh, what's time anyway? It's 12.48. I have actually no idea of my progress though. This zigzagging makes distance guessing hard. Uh, yeah, I think I'm generally pleased with how things are going. So, uh, yeah, right, up, up sticks Wilson, we're moving on. Fly me, and I'm out. Filth, look at it. It's because of the hedges, they stop the prevailing winds from evaporating the, uh, the water off as it blows across the top. So they stay much wetter than everything else for longer in the day. Yeah, right. So, remember, nobody puts a sign up unless there's a reason, because signs are expensive. Ah, okay, well I'm going to have to put my clothes on for this bit, so uh, I'll talk to you again in a minute. Yeah, sleep pan. So we're on the middle bump of the sort of splayed V sign upside down of rivers that I'm having to deal with. Oh, another balloon. Can I get that one? Maybe. I don't know. Looks like wet trench in the middle. No, they'll have to stay for a thousand years. <sighs> so yes, it's going to carry on there and then around the corner at the end of here down into somewhere called Macy Land, a small village. I passed through on the bus. 
and then back out and then all along that out to that point on there and that was where I was going to try and dump the tent on my, the last night of my September trip before getting a bus and whatnot out of Malden so <laughs> I'll have a look for a suitable tent pitch over there as a little thought exercise yeah it's still OC Island I think North Knee's over and round a bit yeah it's a confusing view yeah, planes coming in. I think South End Airport's not too far away. This is, might be an approach lane. Yeah, the occasional big plane come over as well. As long as you're not a lot of travels on a Sunday around here, I don't think, through this route. Yeah, good. I have to find a bench and swig some water and have some nuts and things. Pace myself a bit today. It's a longer one than I've been used to for the last couple, so be good. Well, it's not really. It's about the same length. It's just that. I'd previously done half of each of the last ones on the road before I started filming, so in terms of actual miles walked, it should be quite similar. Just more of them count. <laughs> Good, all right, onward. It's getting on for half past one. Yeah, I'm happy with the progress. I think we'll, we'll be on on time. Should be good. Well, that's quite pleasant. Thought I'd grab us some pictures of this. But if this is just some sort of weird prodigy or well, the spring really is here. It's only like three days into March, so <laughs> that's probably a bit optimistic. I imagine you're going to get storm battered and frosted before you'll get the chance to fruit. But uh, appreciate the early effort anyway. A little bit on this one as well, but none others. Weird. Got some tiny microclimate thing going on here. I don't know. Yeah back off a bit. Get the whole thing in shot. Yeah. No idea what it even is. Rose hip, hawthorn. I don't see any thorns on it. And some sort of I don't know any of these things. <laughs> and that looks like a rose hip. Maybe that's a hawthorn, it's got thorns on, that one. Don't know what this early flower is then, juniper? <laughs> they should have sent an expert. There we go, this is about as picturesque as it's going to get today, I suspect. That is uh, Mayland Sea, because there's an actual village called Mayland further inland, you know. So uh, yeah, I have to go along all the front of all that, presumably the path has access, and then I have to go around the far end somehow and end up on this side and then go back out that way to the end of there. And then back up and round. So uh, yeah, I mean it's, what's it, it's nearly two o'clock, quarter to two o'clock. I might, might try and find a pint of lemonade and a bag of crisps somewhere along the seafront there if there's anything convenient, but otherwise I can't dawdle too much. But yeah, I do have missed out on lunch today, so something might be nice. We have a rest stop and a recuperate. Let's see what there is to offer. It's Sunday and not really tourist season, so we'll see. Basically little places catering to the dog walking crowd, so we'll have see what we can find. Otherwise, yeah, just roll straight on through. I've got nuts in my bag, I've got water. It's all good. Yeah. A marina, a couple of obligatory sailing clubs. Uh, not a lot else really. Probably stuff further inland, but uh, I need to keep some momentum going today. Got to try and head down that way until there's some way to cross that fen and then back along the other side, probably the way that farm is. Yeah, good. All right, come on, Wilson. Time to go. Yeah, don't give them names. I say get attached to him. So how do salvage rights work anyway? Do I just take it? Or do I have to sword fight someone first? Oh god! It's got no sails, a bit grubby, but it is actually sort of tethered to the to the bank at the front in two places. Maybe someone's living in it. Hard to tell. Anyway, right, big old loop of fens. I think somewhere down there I can cross to the other side, cross this channel. It must end over there somewhere. A bit dreary if I'm honest, but uh, you know, I go places in my head. It's all good. Yeah. Acorn says go that way. However, there's a big sign. Both helpful and ominous. 
So three kilometres to the next junction, we have the first option of exiting the seawall. And either further four kilometres to Munden Village, or if you remain on the seawall, further eight kilometres to Meldon. <laughs> There is no exit to Newhall Lane, so nearest access to any main road, village, town, will be 7 or 11 kilometres. <sighs> okay, chaps, this is the point of no return. Are we ready? <laughs> Basically, next stop, Malden, for 8 kilometres away. Mind you, that's only 5 miles, you know. Those are rookie numbers, frankly. St Peter's Way, which we've been apparently on, and goes off down there. That's the bug out to civilization. Now we're going for it. Eight kilometres, yeah, it's only five miles. I've done single stretches like that before, lots. I think less, less uh, seasoned adventurers than myself using this uh, footpath to walk their dog or whatever might be perturbed. Now let's do it. So yeah, 11 kilometres to Malden from here. Okay, which is actually, yeah, about eight miles, I think. Okay, yeah, so we're well over halfway, I think. And it's just a big solid push to the end now. That's okay, I've got supplies, I've got water and nuts. Didn't need a pub anyway. And I can uh, go large on the snacks on the way home, as, as is my want. Mostly because it's quite difficult to fall asleep while you're actually eating something. So I try to make sure I'm, I'm like chewing or eating something most of the way home on the road away. Oh, that's so dangerous. I probably shouldn't admit that on video. Come on, Wilson, time to go. Let's make the big push. Yeah, it's not too bad. That's uh, Mayland Sea, or is it May Sea Land? I think it's Mayland Sea. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it wasn't nearly as bad coming around the end. I thought that would snake off inland for miles and miles, but it just goes to the end there and comes back up pretty quickly. So uh, yeah, heading back out to the main channel again. And once we get to the end of this particular curve, we'll have done with all the stupid zigzags for today. It'll just be a relatively straight bit of coast all the way up to Malden. Should be good. See North and the Island, that kind of thing. Yeah, doing well. A bit longer than I'm used to, and obviously I had a couple of weeks off as well, so it's starting to flag a little, but I'll do it. It's not a problem. Determination and so on. Good. Yeah, it's a long old field. Big long sticky outy peninsula. I mean, the, the other side is only over there, so. Yeah, that's the path. Gotta follow it. I think I was looking to camp somewhere on this back corner um, in September. It looks suitable. We're a very long way from anywhere else, although, <laughs> saying that, there is a person there right now. Fisherman or something, I guess. I'll have a look as I wander past. But yes, yeah, this would have been right out of the way, quiet, sunset and all. Don't have to worry about it today, of course. All right, let's carry on round. Yeah, <laughs> they packed up and left when they saw me coming. Uh, so yeah, somewhere around here, probably not on that bit, that's all other side of the seawall. But uh, probably down there would have done, somewhere in that neck or you know, on this load of trees here. Who knows? Yeah, so on the end of here, a short hop to the other corner and then back down the side and then along and up to Malden. Might even be able to see it from here actually. Because I noticed when I got there it's actually on quite a, quite a pronounced hill in the town centre. Let me come back in zoom mode. All right. That might be it. Did see a couple of church spires. Yeah. Not far to go now then. Probably five miles all in from here, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> maybe in the shelter, or indeed even inside the massive blue box. No idea what it's for. Would have been out of the way though, either side of that, with a good wind shadow. So yeah, that would have been perfect. So yeah, there's stuff to find everywhere you look. And if you set up late enough and bugger off early enough, no one bothers you, no one minds. Yeah. So I have to get back into the habit of all that for the other side. That's still O.C. Island, by the way. <laughs> Let's keep moving. There's always places, though, I think. Well, except, uh, you know, very dense towns, in which case, yes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes the travel lodge is the only option. <sighs> A premier in whatever. Tide coming in. All very gentle, though, very calm. 
isn't it? Alright, so we're off that ridiculous loopy enormous field peninsula. <laughs> Still see May Sea land there. Yeah. Mayland Sea, whichever. I keep getting those mixed up. Oh, warning. Sheep grazing. Okay, I'll uh, bear that in mind. Keep dogs on the lead. No problem here. And there's the acorn. Good. So it should be, that should be the end of the stupid zigzagging that most of today's been so far. I mean, you can still see the Marconi Sailing Club in the background there, and that wasn't even today. That white building in the back centre. <laughs> anyway, I think it's relatively straight from here on to Malden now. A little bit of a little bit of wavy line, but nothing as ridiculous as those. So that's good. I do like straight-lined coastlines, you know. I think my dream coast path will be the uh, the west coast of France, you know, where uh, you sort of just head south for like 800 kilometres with you know no real deviation or breaks. Along the Bay of Biscay, that might be nice. I think it's all dunes and uh, low sea walls like this. <sighs> Good. Uh, got uh, Wilson riding in the papoose at the moment because he was starting to give me a hand blister from uh, carrying him. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm bothering. I'm just going to dump it in, a, in, a, in the first dumpster I see in Malden. Uh, doing my bit to keep the environment tidy or something. Seriously, I haven't seen a suitable bin since I picked him up. <laughs> I mean, true, he did help me out one or two times on some of these slippery and muddy paths between the, uh, the wet hedges, but stab him into the ground and managed to hold myself upright. But that doesn't excuse him for being littered in the first place. He's, I mean, as an umbrella, he's just not functional. He's got like pokey out his spokes all over him and he's, someone's burnt a hole in his canopy so he doesn't even fulfil his primary function. I'm going to have to be ruthless. Yeah, sorry Wilson. That's, that's how it goes, unfortunately. And you should, you should uh, thank yourself grateful I'm giving you a proper funeral. Could have just left you there by the side of the path to rot and be pecked to death by seagulls. Now you eat umbrellas? I don't know, I have to ask. Right, onward. Yeah, tide coming in now. I don't know how far up it goes, although looking at the wet seaweed, probably not much further than it is now. <coughs> Must be quite high. And in the distance, oh, I'm in the wrong mode, hang on, zoom mode, back in a minute. As I was saying, in the distance, it's Bradwell Power Station, still. Beyond there, the actual North Sea. Still, sort of. I don't know where Northney Island is then, obviously there's Ocey Island there. Northney is possibly this one just here, but it's very sort of on the same horizon as the backdrop, so it's hard to pick it out. I think that the nearest bits of trees we're looking at there might be Northney Island. Hard to say. Super tranquil here, I love it. Hang on. Yep, okay. Good. Yeah, a bit of inland view there, it's just fields. Arable crops, which is interesting. And obviously confident enough about the lack of flooding here that they can start to actually plant stuff rather than just leave it as pasture. So, so is he working for them? This whole seawall thing. Maybe a bit less uh, threatened at this far up the river than back down the end. Yeah, something on fire over there. Gondor calls for aid. Yeah, well, I'll have to wait till May because that's not my department over there at the moment. Outside my jurisdiction. How's the sun looking? Yeah. With, well, I could just check the actual time. That would be probably the more civilised thing to do. 15.53, according to the little drag down top bar on my phone. So, yeah. 15.53, uh, yeah, four o'clock, four five. So, yeah, I've got about two hours pushing it. One and three quarter hours technically before sunset, which is long enough for me to get about four miles, maybe five at a push. Yeah, it's gonna be tight, gonna be tight today. I think I'll be into Malden by the time the sun's actually setting, so that's fine. It will be pavements and street lights and things, that'll be all right. But uh, yeah, yeah, a bit of shenanigans with the transport and the logistics. I'm really, really absolutely pushing it now with this whole stupid drive to a place, walk a bit, drive home nonsense even with the aid of the bus. 
I mean, I couldn't have done this in one go if uh, that bus didn't exist. This would have had, this would have had to have been this would have had to have been two loop trips with dubious parking in between. And I was just getting sick of that whole M25 <laughs> commute, you know. So I'll go home today, driving around the M25, probably at some stupid long traffic, and get home by about ten, um, and not have to do that again, ever, ever, ever. Because yeah, as I keep going on, as I keep mentioning, further further journeys northward will have to be by train and then a week of backpacking and sleeping in hedges, and then back by train. So I won't have to be, won't be driving up this far out any further again. So that's good. Well, unless I have some sort of massive massive breakdown and devise some kind of minivan bicycle strapped to the back, stay at a local hotel and use it as a base of operations type thing. But that's a whole kettle of something else for a whole other time. I mean, I wonder if I'll get to the point where, for going further north, I don't think this will happen in England, to be honest, but it might. Uh, I'll get to whole regions where even a 70 mile backpack week, there's still no connection for transport at either end, you know, or there's absolutely no shops or towns anywhere for an entire week. I don't think anywhere on the coast of England has is that sparse. I think there's always something, always, you know, even if it does involve a few miles of trudging inland to find the nearest village. I think there's always something. There was always a few train stations in the vicinity. I haven't mapped out the full staging for all of the north sections yet, but I uh, just don't think it gets that remote. I mean, Scotland's a different ball game. I think that really would start to challenge and test just the ability to even get there, let alone do the walking. <sighs> but uh, yeah, anyway, problems for another time. Let's keep walking today. I don't want to get caught out by dark. I mean, it's nice that it is getting lighter in the evenings, but still not... Still not like, you know, light at half past nine yet. That's, that's a long way off. So, move it. Come on, Wilson, miles to cover. <laughs> I keep looking for places to camp, and I know I don't need to. I mean, that would have been ideal. Sheltered on two sides, three sides. Flat, grassy, out of the way of any inquisitive Land Rovers or whatever. Yeah on any private land as such. Still, don't need to worry about any of that, so that's good. But that's the kind of thing you should be looking for, yeah. yeah. A couple of major drainage channels meeting here, exiting to here. High tide. So this is awkward now, this is a pain because I suppose just bad luck. I was thinking if we got to the causeway uh, for North Knee Island, which is that, I think the causeway is somewhere in underneath that lot. Uh, I might have wandered over to have a look, but uh, them's the brakes. I don't have six hours to sit around and wait for it to go down again like I did at Erm, um, crossing the Erm, um, so <laughs> that island will have to go unvisited. It's not part of the coast path anyway, so <laughs> I think it's National Trust, I think. Uh, right, so, making a good time, pressing on, there's a bit of fence to deal with here, go around the edge of that, and back out the other side, and you're practically in Malden. And then there's some marine, marina shorefront to deal with. I hope there's a path. Still making good time. Good. Yeah, here we are. Causeway to Northerly Island. High tide. No northy for you. So somebody sat there waiting. Wow. Been there, done that. Know what that's like. Frustrating. Yeah, we're carrying on today. Not far from Malden now, I can see the outskirts. Oh, here we go, press pause for more information. Excite. Mm. There we go, most of it's fens anyway, so not much of it you can actually look at. Yeah. And the National Trust sites in Essex. Surprisingly few, actually, for a whole county. Not well represented here. Oh, it's closed anyway. Whatever it is that's on there. There we go, you something about Vikings. Here in, here in 991, L. Brithnoth, the elder men of Essex, led an army against the Danish Vikings, which ended in the defeat of the East Saxons. <laughs> oh well. Rising tides, yeah. 
Hmm, right. You know, I need to go that way. Crack on while the day lasts. Still, the sun's come out for a nice evening session. It's nice, early evening, late afternoon. Do like a bit of a sunset. Get to see one, I suppose, as I walk. All right, onto the town and my car and food and drink and home and bed and a bath and things in various orders. Ah, that was quite stodgy. Very slippery, sticky bit of path. It's probably more pleasant in May or September. <laughs> Still, good news. Civilization, I think. Got some uh, hard packed gravel here. It's good. I think this might be a, a, a sensible path all the way back to the car now, back to the bridge in the end. So, just need to meander onwards. I'm seeing people again, so we're obviously near <laughs> places people walk. Come off of that uh, 11 kilometre do or die stretch of doom, apparently. It's supposed to be more than just here then. You start to see boatyards and stuff. Good. Okay. What are we doing here? Yeah, it's about 10 to 5. There's about another 45 minutes or so, but to be honest, you could do this in the dark quite safely, so not worrying anymore. Probably about another two miles perhaps to go to the bridge. We'll see where I will leave you. And Winston. Winston? Wilson. Oh, I see, I've forgotten your name already. You mean nothing to me, Umbrella. You don't even have a name now, you're dead to me. Oh, I see, dead naming my own Umbrella. Not my Umbrella. I'll stop thinking like that. I need to find a bin quickly. Interesting. We're in a park now. I've seen an acorn sent me along here. That's obviously some service road that they don't want me on. Is this the park that I parked my car in? Was that a different park? I'm going further on. Not quite sure, I'll have to check. <laughs> Hello, I seem to have lost my car. I just wander around beeping the uh, automatic door unlocky button, maybe that'll. I don't know. <laughs> Observation deck, hide thing. Hmm. Right, let's keep moving. And suddenly civilization. Big long promenade here all the way up to wherever, I think. Promenade Park, I think this is called. Statue of someone on the end there. I think it might be the Viking chap, the Brithnoth fella, the Earl. Yeah, nice. Very pleasant evening. A little chilly. Right, I've got to keep going though because I can get to the bridge. Ah, bit of an inland detour. Restricted shore access, I think, boat yards and the like. Ah, just about time that right, it's starting to get dark. Quite, quite busy out there, lots of people out strolling and stuff. Right, I'll soon be there. Ah, here we are. You are here. It's a little bit of a park here. Dotted line, bridge. Bump done. And my car's back here somewhere. So I'll have to come back around along the main street back to the car at some point. Ooh, it's good. I mean, interesting, I saw an England Coast Pass sign there, bespokery. Got the acorn, some stylized writing. I saw the sign back there saying that this road here was the uh, England. Uh, Oh. Uh, yeah, England National Cycle Route number one that runs along here, which I think was the one we saw started at Dover and ends in Inverness. So that must have looped its way across the Thames and wound up on this coast somehow. Yeah. Right, let's uh, make a push on the final straight before it gets too dark to film. <laughs> ah. Here we are, Chalmer Bridge, or something. Full Bridge, says there. That way lies Colchester and beyond, I suppose. But for me, that's the end of another session, another season, another stage. Um, yeah. Uh. Yeah, so, uh, for me, the walk is over for now. Anyway, I'm going to spend take the next two months off and spend that time giving off dead YouTube channel vibes. And if anyone's left in May, um, join me back here, where I shall return with the backpack and uh, a, a much better weather and temperature and a sunny disposition and a thirst for more mileage.
heading northwards through all that somehow. Not my problem today though. Yeah, so uh, for you, Wilson, the walk is over. But don't worry, I'm taking you home because that bin over there is clearly full and there's a dumpster at home where I can properly fit you. Anyways, so see you later.